With Nigeria's presidential elections uh, and National Assembly polls less than 72 hours away. And with the nation beset with unprecedented challenges, how prepared is everyone for this all important exercise? We'll look at this ahead on The Breakfast. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, uh, NNPCL, has announced that it is committed to ending oil theft in the country. But despite the increase in production levels, the question to be asked is how realistic is this? And in of the press, we have uh, analysis of some of the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. It's a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're counting down to Nigeria's general elections, which is just less than 72 hours from now. Uh, on Saturday, the, 5th of, um, the 25th of February 2023, at about this time, Nigerians were trooping up from their houses by foot to go vote uh, in the national elections to determine who they will elect as the president of the country and, of course, uh, representatives at National Assembly, Senate and House of Reps uh, from May 2023. All right, so we're counting down. Exacting time, you see, you know, the atmosphere is, is, is filled with that um, expectation of what will happen next. Everybody is wondering. People are asking, discussing, and counting down. It's almost as if there's a, a, a boxing bout <laughs> about to happen or if the final of the World Cup is just upon us. Many Nigerians are filled with expectations and high hopes that this election will produce something to switch the country from the path uh, it is right now to a path of prosperity and fulfilled potentials. Uh, uh, Plus TV Africa is your channel of choice for coverage uh, round the clock all day on election day, D-Day. Some call it Judgment Day. Before we get into our major conversations, because we're talking about that uh, later on the program, let's uh, keep our finger on the pulse, place our finger on the pulse of uh, what's been trending as far as discussions on the social space are concerned. And we'll start with this one, the United States Embassy issuing a security alert ahead of uh, the 2023 elections. Uh, it's, um, I think maybe no surprises that the uh, biggest democracy in the world, the most powerful in the country in the world, the world's leading superpower, has come out to say that um, uh, with this travel alert, we will call it that. I think we're used by now um, to having these alerts um, in 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 the country or about the country. But let's get some details of this. Um, it, it was a notice uh, shared on a website uh, by the United States or the United States Embassy. It's alerting its citizens in Nigeria uh, about possible protests you know, and restricted movements ahead of the uh, two elections, the state elections and national elections, February 25 and March 11, respectively. Um, in, on that, in that statement on the website of the U.S. Embassy, it's advising its nationals to avoid uh, rallies, venues of rallies, vicinities of rallies, uh, as, quote, they can turn violent with little or no notice. All right, that is what they're saying. If you remember... Um, not too long ago, in fact, about a few months ago, um, the Nigerian government had issues with the United Kingdom and the United States government, so a security alert issued about some Nigerian cities, a breakdown of, of law and order, um, especially in the FCT, the Federal Capital Territory, you know, and uh, they advised their citizens to stay clear of Nigeria's capital and some other cities. And we saw uh, American citizens leaving Nigeria you know, in their numbers or videos and pictures of uh, 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 them queuing up at the airports to, to board a plane out of the country. Um, if you follow those images, I'm sure at that time, what I've gone through your mind was that the country was about to descend into some sort of civil war. You know, there was a lot of uncertainty looking at those images. Um, well, I think by now we should be used to uh, this, this, this drama <laughs> by um, the diplomatic corps you know, the foreign embassies, especially the leading ones, UK, US, um, and it's not unexpected that they'll have something like this, especially at the time of elections. I mean, 
even 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 every ordinary person out there would by now be saying, okay, elections around the corner. It's usually um, an uncertain time. We don't know what happened. Uh, we're going to stock our home with some food and basic necessities, you know, water and all that, to make sure that you know if anything happens, we we are safe. So no surprises um, there. Uh, but interestingly, yeah, and I think this is we should borrow from this. <laughs> uh, the American and the U.S. embassy is asking uh, or advising its citizens, American citizens in Nigeria, uh, to have. Uh, at least three days of food and water at home in case the movement uh, uh, restrictions um, extend beyond uh, the election day. You know, just put three days' worth of food and water at home. I think I would, I would say one week. <laughs> one week, because I, I have one week um, worth of, of supplies, the basics, you know, uh, for the week. I, I had to go yesterday to the mall, the supermarket, to, to get some supplies and... Uh, <laughs> That's it, one week, <laughs> because you never can tell. But we're hoping for the best. We believe in that the best will happen. Um, the title, the notice on the U.S. Embassy website, uh, Security Alert, Possible Protests Leading to Elections and Restricted Movements on Election Day, uh, is what they said. This is what it reads. Uh, the government of Nigeria will restrict the movement of all personal vehicles on election days across the country. It says uh, information from the government of Nigeria indicates that only law enforcement agencies or personnel and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, uh, INEC accredited elected observers will be allowed to move freely uh, along all the roads. It says, based on past election practice, uh, we anticipate personal vehicles will be blocked from any and all attempted road movement from midnight uh, until 6 p.m. February 25 and midnight until 6 p.m. March 11, I think. Is it 6 p.m.? Yeah, okay. Yes, that's what they say. So please be advised, the statement says that movement restriction may be extended at any time. Uh, be alert to government uh, of Nigeria's information about the restrictions. Also, uh, that's what they're saying. So, you know, um, I think it's, it's, it's good. This is normal. There's nothing strange about this. But um, what I think we should do is we should all borrow a leaf. They're saying have a stockpile of food at home, right? So, um, I mean... It's not just for American citizens. You and I should have some food and water at home. You know, I, I, after I went shopping yesterday, uh, I was picked up by a cabbie. And the cabbie who picked me up said, ah, I'm sure this is for the elections. And I said, oh, God, <laughs> this one is not just for elections, though. Because, you know, um, when you want to prepare for elections, you don't buy, you know, fruit. I had some apples and I had some, um, some you know, vegetables and stuff. I just stopped by the grocery store to buy. Um, I told him, oh, guy, when it's time for elections, you buy Gary, Gary, buy one sack, half sack of Gary if, if you can't afford a full sack. Eh? Buy Gary, keep it at home. Buy beans, beans. You know, if you can buy a full sack, buy half a sack of beans. Keep it at home. Buy rice. Uh -huh. Those are the things you buy, <laughs> Eba. <laughs> you know, not uh, apples and vegetables, though. No. So as I was telling him, buy, buy Eba. Gary, sorry. Keep at home. Nice one. Eh? <laughs> so anything happens, you know. You know, I remember the lockdown and um, not the lockdown, but the NSAS protests. I remember when uh, Yen Sonwike, governor of River State, declared a curfew in a part of River State called Oyibo. Sorry, I talk about River State a lot because it's close to my heart. You know, I lived there for many years. People couldn't, were not warned. They were not prepared, you know, because of the IPOB uh, related violence, you know, during the NSAS or after the NSAS protests. Um, people were, were, were went through hell because they couldn't leave their ho houses. You know, I won't go into details. You know, because it's, um, it's 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 sensitive. Okay, but people couldn't leave their homes. You know, there were soldiers everywhere. But I'm going into details because it's sensitive. Um, for now, you know, so so people could leave their homes, and I had people calling my radio program then saying that they just need food, that they are dying, they need medicine. You know, they need, that's why a lot of people from Southeast, who are the dominant people who live in that part of River State, are not um, supporters of uh, the River State. They're not, they're not fans, you know. He, he's not popular. The River State governor is not popular amongst people from the Southeast because what they went through when he declared a weeks of curfew, if not months, um, people went through hell. You know, that's why he used to be their, their guy, but they turned, you know. Anyway. 
Um, so you have to, I mean, you have to just prepare. If, we, if the prophecies we've received from uh, certain ministers, I saw the one of Paul Adifarasi yesterday. I saw one from one prophet, Fehi. That one, his own was really detailed, though. <laughs> he said um, there'll be an interim national government and all that. You know, there'll be chaos and there'll be fighting protests worse than answers. I say, hey. <laughs> so, I mean, I've seen another one from uh, one Iginla. I think Iginla is his name. And uh, one from Pastor Chris, or, uh, Chris Oyakilumi, Reverend Chris Oyakilumi, PhD. You know, so, um, well, it's just smart to, despite the, regardless of the, the prophecies by these men of God, um, ordinarily around election period, prepare. Okay, so please be advised. Let's move on to the next one. Um, uh, but before then, I think I saw an advisory yesterday from, is it the US or UK? Um, advising its citizens in Nigeria to stay clear of ATM points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They told him to stay clear of it. Look for other ways to get money, uh, apart from the auto teller machines, because of what we're seeing unfold. It's really a sad one. All right, let's go to another one. This is bizarre. You know, these are the kind of stories I like. <laughs> I like these ones. These ones, I really like them. They don't, these, are, these ones are interesting, okay? Um, Lagos conductor. In Nigeria, those who um, assist the driver uh, of, um, you know, public transportation taxis, you know, these taxis here, uh, or buses, like we call them here, yeah, but they're all taxis, whether a bus or even a kind of taxi. Um, the guys who assist them to collect, you can see, you can see this guy, collect the money from the passengers to, you know, you know, open the door so the new passengers can enter and alight and all that. We call them conductor in, in, in Nigeria. And this guy was seen with a POS, a point of sale device, you know, with, with which he, I think he is collecting um, payment from, from his passengers. Since they don't have cash, you know, he has his POS. Well, it may feel it. Your plan is working. I think we, we can we just play the, the clip while we're talking. I don't know if we can play that clip. But if you have seen the videos online, uh, it's quite, quite interesting. You know, this is due to the narrow scarcity. I've never seen anything like this in my life. <laughs> Look at him. All right. The video is, if, if you can see the clip, you know, he, he's actually agile. Very, very, you know, he looks very comfortable with, uh, with that POS machine, you know. Uh, imagine getting to a downfall, this yellow, the yellow bus taxis, we call them downfall, um, getting into one and then, you know, I think it's a selling point too. He, in the video, he was waving, he was waving his POS to show people, hey, you can come into this bus, you can come to this bus. We will we, we, we'll, we'll have other means to collect your money. I mean, if the churches and other places you have POS machines, uh, no one should be shy, you know, no one should be shy at all. Do we have, can we roll the tape? Okay, so, so, so um, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting, really. Very interesting, indeed. Um, it's a selling point, too. While other, other bus you know, conductors and drivers are, are you know, rejecting passengers, these guys are going to make a killing because he has to wave it. Say, CEO, I have a POS. Eh? You can come into my bus. No issues. Just bring your ATM. But how many ATM cards, how many... People out there have ATM cards, you know. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Um, of course, we know that the Naira scarcity has lingered around the country. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria says it's uh, implementing this Naira redesign port and cash withdrawal policy um, for uh, monetary or macroeconomic reasons, you know. And, but people have been unable to access cash, you know. So you're taking your money to the bank so that. The old Naira doesn't get stuck at home. Or you have money already in the bank. And then you can't get what you want out. You know, people have been queuing at, at ATM points around the country. Have been going to the, some banks are shut. And they can't get money. You know, it had never heard of anything like this anywhere in the world. Apart from maybe countries that are in economic chaos. You know, like Greece, you know, and other countries, Venezuela. People queue in, in Lagos and other cities in Nigeria for money, and they are given only 1,000, 1,000 naira, okay? Only 1,000 naira after hours of queuing, you know, at ATM points. It's, it's strange. It is bizarre. All right, so this, this um, guy, I think he was a conductor. He was plying Ketu Ojota Mile 12, and he was seen saying, head saying, Ketu, Ketu Ojota, Ojota Mile 12, Mile 12. POS, Ketu Ojota, Ketu Ojota Mile 12, POS. <laughs> this is the 
And you are not bad as I did. And you are Kata Kata. Everything that I jaga. I go to the tree and you are not And you are the tree. You fall. You are the tree and you are not too. You are the yellow or the yellow. You are the yellow or the yellow. You know, <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, you know, uh, I just love the commentary by the, the, those who are filming that, that, um, that user-generated video there. I just like the, like the commentary. You know, you just need to use the, the problems of Nigeria to, to lower your blood pressure, you know. Turn it into comedy. Just laugh about it. Look at the funny side, you know. And I, I love, I love the way Nigerians go about it. There are serious matters, you know, of state. And um, you go online, people just just turn it into into comedy, you know. And they just and people say, ah, why are you joking with serious things? Hey, because people are just using that as a coping me mechanism, you know. Just using to cope, you know. So it, it's good to see that uh, people are <laughs> uh, looking for at ways to laugh at this. It's really funny. It's really funny. Never seen anything like that before. Quite bizarre. You know, quite bizarre. But I think it's, it goes to show that um, the cashless policy, um, uh, the reasons, you know, for having this, you know, policy is working. You know, but um, it is, it's, you can't, you can't, um, how do I put it now? I haven't seen any country in the world where people go to withdraw money and they can't withdraw the money. You know, I, I think at this point we know that there's some, some sinister um, conspiracy you know, a plot somewhere to make sure that people do not have access to funds. I, I just think so, because it's, it's not normal what's happening in Nigeria. You, you, you can't foist uh, cashlessness on, on people. It's, there's no economy in the world where you, people can have access to cash they need. I mean, you, you, there's no economy. I don't know about it. I mean, of course, in China, uh, we see that people are uh, more, uh, you know, digital in their payments and not just digital, they are contactless, okay? So they do a lot of this scan to pay where you take your phone, you know, and I've seen it in Chinese villages, village, village in China, and someone buys some food, street food, and then the, uh, the, the vendor has a, uh, a QR code printed on a, on a card, okay? And they have it on a table and say, okay, you can pay, and they scan to pay. And the, well, the biggest, um, I mean, um, Fintech company in China is Alipay. Alipay owned by Alibaba. Uh, only God knows where the owner of Alibaba is still now. But, but, so, but the thing is, the, that's an advanced economy. You know, if you go to a village in China, you see a village. It's not what we think as village over here. They have Wi-Fi. <laughs> they have Wi-Fi. Okay? The villages now in China are, are advanced. Okay? It's not the villages they used to have then. Because the government of China, they've lifted millions of people out of poverty. So it's a miracle, really. It's what they say, you know. So um, uh, you, you, you won't be surprised to see you have this, this can to pay, you know, and every, almost everyone having smartphones, okay? Almost everyone in China has a smartphone. Uh, here, you know, owning a smartphone is not too cheap. It's not affordable for a lot of people. So they also have, you know, ordinary phones, what we call touchlight phones, you know, that are not on the internet. They're not smart, okay? So... Because of that, you expect that people will have to use the POS. Otherwise, um, it would have been better to use a smartphone and then you can do the scan to pay. You know, the guy just says, oh, this is the card. Just scan it and pay me. You know. But I think another thing that we should encourage these guys to do is to use the USSD code. Unfortunately, they are not, they've not been working in some banks. I mean, there's a particular bank. I won't mention their name. <laughs> For, for months now, I've been complaining you know, on Twitter that the, the app has not been working as it should. But since this um, Emefele plan began, you know, uh, policy began, they, they've gone from, from bad to worse, really. Even this morning, I tried to use the app. I couldn't use it. You know, yesterday, several times, I tried to use the USSD code. I couldn't use it. But ordinarily, um, it would have been better for people to use the USSD code instead of carrying that heavy device around, you know. And also... Um, this is a good time for the central bank to make another push to see if Nigerians will accept um, mobile money, yeah, banking and mobile money uh, services. You know, another push to see if Nigerians will accept that. Because initially and 
in previous times, it's not been really accepted. The penetration has been low. Um, people have not really gone for that. They favor the organic POS services as opposed to uh, mobile money. So this is not a bad time at all. Let, let's move on to our next, uh, uh, I think it's the last trending story. Uh, this is quite uh, uh, um, a sad one, really. And uh, a gas plant exploded in a community in Delta State. I think this will be another opportunity for people to be reminded of um, the dangers of living around gas plants. And also for um, the media to ask um, the NMDPRA, the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum uh, Regulatory Agency, um, I mean, what, what their criteria is for approving gas plants in densely populated areas, you know, uh, in residential areas. Um, I, I remember some years ago, the Residents Association of one community in, uh, in a city in Nigeria approached me to say, hey, we needed to talk about this on your programs. Um, there's a new gas plant on this building near where we live. We don't want it there because the, the, the situation or the, uh, the location is just close to people's houses. I mean, you can, you can you know, stretch your hand out of your window and touch the, the fence of the gas plant, and we're not comfortable about it. So these are questions that the NMDPRA will have to answer. You know, what, what's the criteria for having gas plants, approving gas plants in residential areas or anywhere at all? Um, but this is an Edo, a community in, um, in Delta State, sorry. It's called uh, uh, Efuru, okay? Efuru is where you have the, um, uh, the Petroleum Technology Institute, which has been there for many years. Efuru is um, in Uwe, Uwe, a local government area of um, Delta State. All right, and uh, the gas plant exploded on Monday evening. Um, we hear it's uh, at a place called Nelmic Gas Plant. Nelmic Gas Plant, uh, opposite the Ephraim Post Office, just after the Ephraim uh, Market. Ephraim is just before you get into Wari in Delta State. Um, we don't know how many people have died or if there were casualties um, as a result of that gas plant explosion. We don't yet know uh, what caused the explosion. But um, residents, you know, we're calling on Monday, we're calling for help to contain the, the fire outbreak. You know, those plying the Airflow Sapele Road, you know, had to divert um, because of uh, the situation. So it's quite sad. Um, this isn't the first time we're having something like this. Um, and whenever you have a gas plant explosion, it's usually very, very, um, very serious because gas is, is air, okay? It's air. So it's, it's, wind just blows it to anybody's house or any location close by, the fire will follow. You know, it's quite bizarre. I remember the gas plant explosion in the, in the Ghanaian capital, Accra, some years ago. Even the persons who were on a flyover, f a distance from the gas plants, were, 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 were blown away, you know, by, by that explosion, and a lot of people died. So it, it's quite a sad one. And, and like we said, this is um, another opportunity to, to call on the NMDPRA, you know, former DPR, you know, to, to try their best to see how they can go around the country again and um, look at these sites, you know, to see maybe there are some uh, gas plants they approved some years ago in areas that were not densely populated. And maybe, you know, um, development has caught on in that area. And, you know, we've had people build houses and all that. They need to go around and look at. Um, are these gas plants ob observing the safety procedures and rules? You know, we need them to be on top of their game because when a life is lost, you can't, you can't have it back. All right. Uh, this is quite a sad one. And uh, if, if more information comes out, of course, you'll hear about it on Plus TV Africa. We'll leave it at that. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, dive into uh, the newspapers, looking at the headlines with analysis uh, with our guests who will be on standby in a few seconds. My name is Kofi Bartels. Please stay with us.